You are listening to The Kentucky X-Files Season 3, with your hosts Dennis Mays, Tyler Stewart, and Josh Gibbs. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at www.kyxfiles.com. And now, on to our show. I guess uh, w- I thought we, time. yeah, we were just just going to keep talking. Yeah, I can't believe it. So unprofessional. It's so unprofessional. We did make it the intro to this to the podcast, Tyler. Welcome back, guys, to your Kentucky X Files. Ah. <laughs> ah. Does that remind you of the turtle video? Yeah, the that's exactly ah. what I was thinking of. <laughs> what turtle video? The one where the turtle's humping the shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can't get it out of my head. You and, yeah. you and I laughed in your old studio for weeks over that and Day Job Orchestra. Oh, my God, Day Job Orchestra. They deserve <clears throat> the biggest shout out. Yeah. Like, probably some of the best. I, I know there's, there's new channels out there that do like the and you know what is it bad living yeah the bad yeah bad lip, yeah but them guys man they were the especially originals. when they went at uh george w mm-hmm. you know they love the word check out zip. the fucking drum solo was sweet <laughs> it was like it was it, everything was uh pomegranate mm. like that no it was a beef pierogi beef pierogi <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah. Star Trek ones, though. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. It was Captain Sean Luke Picard really liked beef pierogies. <laughs> He's like, "We're gonna go have a rub down with Beverly, eh?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the lions. Yeah. Oh, the lions! <laughs> yeah. hey. Hey. Yeah. Hours of entertainment. Hours. It was Anybody just that one there? video. Hours. Yeah, of that one video. Anybody out there hasn't seen Day Job Orchestra on YouTube, go yeah. immediately and tell them the Kentucky X Files sent you. Yeah, DJO. Yeah, because I, I don't think that Day Job Orchestra will get you some of them, but if you're looking for the Lions specifically, it's yeah, DJO Lions. Yeah, watch it and a few extra times. You know, it is so good. stupid. It's and, great shit though. And Turtle fucks a shoe is pretty good. That's that's yeah. You know, uh, I ran across uh, Joe Cartoon the other day. Oh my god, I haven't heard that word forever. And I was like, this dude's this dude's still around. I don't. I think he does like more music stuff now. Like I don't think he does the cartoons quite as much. Like every now and again, but that's the guy that does the um the D and D thing, right? He did the like hamster in a blender. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the Christmas thing, the animation I send you oh, every year, yeah, yeah, the Santa yeah, Claus, yeah. And he shits out a reindeer. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does that one. Oh. Uh, classics. Yeah. yeah. Classics. Hey, was it gerbil in a blender or hamster in a blender? Ha- probably a hamster. Yeah. And he, didn't he do Superfly too? Oh God, the, there was like three of them, and they were yeah. like my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, you piss off Superfly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I always loved how the animals would have they would be seemingly normal in the until the end. Then all of a sudden they had superpower. Yeah. Like the fly could just straight fly through somebody. Yeah. That was fucking amazing. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Like, early days of the internet. I never thought that that stuff was going to be like an, an, an like an antique, like a relic now. You know? well, it's like like stick death. Oh my god, stick death. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Amazing. Stick, stick death was fantastic. Do you think somebody one day is going to be like flipping through and they're going to be like, God, 
Do you remember Kentucky X Files? Do you remember them guys? Wow. I hope. I hope. <laughs> you know who I watched a marathon of like two weeks ago? Who's that? Strong Bad. Strong Bad. Do you remember the Strong Bad emails? I can't remember. Oh. It sounds familiar. He was the uh, luchador. He was a little cartoon luchador. Hang on, let me. Uh, All right, continue talking here, and I'll I'll pull up a, a picture of him. I'll throw it in here. I think it'd be hilarious if one day somebody was flipping through and they were like, "Oh my god, I remember these guys." Whatever happened to them? Yeah, and they're they're reading through an article, and it's like, well, Tyler was the first person to uh, ever raise cattle on Mars when Elon Musk uh, sent you know the colonists. I don't think I have the strength for that right now. Yeah. It's a shame what happened to Denny, though. It was uh, April 29, 2023. He died of an abscess tooth. Huh. Very prophetic, you know? But, uh, this is very specific, too. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to What happened to Josh? What happened to, what happened to Josh? Do, like, let's hear it. What, there's got to be a legend. What happened to him? Uh, I'd like to think that he's he's out there and he's messing around in his garage. You know, he's got a collection of guitars. Yeah, maybe some gold records. You know, sprinkle some gold records up there. You know, throw a couple extra ones in there. You know, I like where this is going. And you know, uh, like up and coming artists are coming over to to you know hang out with him and and learn the secrets. You know, but they have to they have to survive the mead first. Ah, uh, you know, it's not. It's Good not luck. easy. Yeah. Good luck. I filled this horn full. <laughs> yeah. Here's Strong Bad. Oh, okay. I remember this guy. Yeah, homestarrunner.com. That was the <laughs> check on my email. I still do that, like just to check my email because that's what he does. <laughs> and one, and here's the thing is like, I guess it was a Mandela effect. I thought he did it in all of them. Yeah. No, he doesn't. It was only one that he was just like, check out my email. I don't know why he did it like that. It just stuck. Here's it just stuck in my brain yeah. like a worm, and it's there forever. <laughs> That's awesome. I do remember that, though. Do you guys remember the crank, uh, crank anchors? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I still, every now and again, um, <laughs> every now and again, I'll be like, hey, lady. <laughs> I tell you. There was there was a show that was sort of like Crank Anchors, um, as far as like the platform. It was called Shorties Watching Shorties, but so instead of Muppets, it was cartoon characters. It was two cartoon babies that would watch short clips. And it, <laughs> dude, I don't know what happened to that show and why it didn't last. I'm gonna have to find a specific episode, yeah, and I'm gonna send it to our chat. And you guys are gonna like lose it. Hell yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I miss them old days, man. Yeah, there was every cartoon that I can remember growing up would probably not fly now. <laughs> you, you know fucking, what I mean? You fucking think? I I mean, think about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the eighties, right? Okay. And all you have to do is look at how uh, look at how April is dressed, and they would not do that now. And then nowadays, where people are like uh, I'm confused, what was wrong with? Am I just too old not to realize that there's an issue? Well, I was looking at this thing where it was talking about how April was was kind of uh, God. This is gonna like. This is just going to be one of those topics where, okay, basically she was like always pigeonholed into a certain role and she was dressed for this role. And then when they made the new movies, they pretty much dialed that up to like a million. And uh, there's this whole movement out there that doesn't like that. They don't like uh, when the actor fits the role too much. God, there's just no way to say it. You can't even say it without pissing you all off. <laughs> I am so fucking confused right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Here, 
Here's some weird uh, weird facts I just learned about that. Okay, you guys remember the live action movies, right? Mm-hmm. The first yeah. one. Okay, remember the beginning part where uh, uh, I think it was probably the begin. It was around the beginning part where uh, Michelangelo is waiting for uh, pizza. Mm-hmm. He's like, pizza guy's thirty. It has got. He's got thirty seconds. The guy, the pizza guy, is the guy that actually is in the costume of Donatello. That's his cameo in the movie. Really? That's the guy that does all the action scenes in Donatello's costume. Wise man say, don't pay full price for late yeah, pizza. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> and then the guy, remember Raphael, uh, when Raph went out and he was in the trench coat mm-hmm. and he was running after uh, the, uh, uh, like Casey, Casey yeah. Jones, and he rolls over that taxi cab. Mm-hmm. The guy in the back seat is the guy that does all the action scenes inside the costume of Raphael. Yeah, really? that, yeah, that guy. And then there's some I can't remember. I can't remember the one that does Mikey and uh, Leonardo, but they said the guy. Remember when the Foot Clan finally catches up to April, and that one of the Foot Clans smacks her in the face. Yeah, that's supposed to be. I think that's supposed to be Michelangelo. Or uh, Leonardo, one of the two. No kidding. Yeah, they all made cameos inside the first movie, but I like, dude, I just really like. So, uh, like, I can't remember what it was. Uh, another podcast. Uh, it was on a reel, and I, uh, it was just, I was just scrolling through, and I saw that. I was like, no way, that's pretty cool. You out there listening to other podcasts and cheating on us? <laughs> hey, you got to diversify. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm. Putting some pictures up here that, that are gonna briefly. I want. I want to get out of this one, so I'm just gonna put these out here and then let your imagination kind of go with why they don't really fly anymore. Okay, so no, uh, let's go I, with I this get, one. Yeah, I get it. Holy crap! Okay, so okay. you're talking comic book. Oh yeah, yeah. It wasn't just. It wasn't just a comic book though. Okay, so there's that one. There's a. Here's this one. This is an updated one. Okay. You can tell that there's a scaling difference. You know what I mean? I, I see. I don't remember those from the cartoon as much. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. That's because in the cartoon, the scale changed pretty much from episode to episode. And it was it was one of them deals where it was like, it. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever like look into like the Disney thing and like how much hidden shit is going on back there animators from back then were fucking they were fiends like they were literally fiends they hit all <clears throat> kinds of shit and it's hilarious so was the was the first or second one from the original no it can't be from the original comic book because the original comic book was in black and white yeah and they actually used guns yeah it was a very dark very dark comics or, or gra- graphic novel yeah I see. I was. I never remember that because all I remember is the the jumpsuit. Yeah, I, I don't remember. The there cleavage. was little little points where like she would be doing something, and like one of the turtles would be sitting there. Like, I, I mean, this stuff was everywhere, though. Uh, I was. Why, why do I not remember this? I was listening to Joe Rogan your, talk about uh, Pinocchio. Was, yeah, the original Pinocchio movie. Did you see? Did you guys ever listen to that with uh, Jim Brewer? No. You mean the animated, like the first? Yeah, the first movie? animated one. Um, the part they were talking about the pub scene, mm-hmm. where this guy was like basically uh, telling the the fox that like the, there was like this character was a fox. It was like evil or whatever. Yeah. And he's like telling him, he's like, "No, nah, you 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 take the stupid boys." And he's like, the fox is like, "Well, what do you know? What if?" Whatever, and he's like, no, 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 they don't kill him. He's like, you take him to Pleasure Island, and then they, he's like, Pleasure Island, and he's like, yeah, and they don't come back as boys. And I'm like, I loved that movie. Like, why, why are we? You know what I mean? Like, this is terrible. This actually brings up a a weird <laughs> one for me. Okay, I don't know. You guys were probably old, like past this. Do you guys remember the Will Smith movie Wild Wild West? Yeah. Okay. 
do you guys remember any real parts about that movie? Not really. A handful okay. of things. Okay. Well, the one main thing I <laughs> wanted to like, because we were talking about things that wouldn't slide today. I remember this was advertised at Burger King. You could get toys. I remember getting toys from this thing. And, dude, there was a scene where he meets this guy. I think his name is Doc, uh, Dr. Loveless. And yeah. he had half of his body. And they were going back and forth, like, making jokes about who they were, which Dr. Loveless making racist comments. Yeah. Saying that I don't want you to be a slave to your disappointment. Oh, yeah. And – Something about like and saying other yeah. racial slurs. Yeah, and this was advertised. It's a PG movie. It was advertised as a for kids, basically. I yeah. know it says PG is still parental guidance, but you, there's no age restriction on it, though. Right. That's right. what yeah. I'm saying. It's like there's the craziness, and I've never heard anybody say crap about this movie. Yeah. Club. Like well, there's never been any backlash on that. You, you got to keep Wild Wild West out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that's what that's, I kept like. I kept thinking is that it was so long ago, but that's we still do that to this day, where we vilify somebody that did an, uh, a movie years and years ago. Uh, but honestly, I, man, I think uh, I recently watched. I recently watched Chris Rock mm-hmm. do a uh, like his com- comedy or whatever, and he. I watched it and I thought it was interesting, but his title, I think, made a lot of sense for nowadays. The title of his show, and he explains it. You know, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who wants to watch it, but his title was called "Selective Outrage." Oh, yeah, that's good, and. He goes through the whole thing about what selective outrage is, you know, and it's yeah. brilliant. But that's what's going on. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what's going on right now. Well, and it's like I think I, I watched an interview with Jamie Fox talking about uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tropic Thunder. Yeah, and how the selective outrage wasn't towards Robert Downey Jr. It was towards Ben Stiller's Simple Jack. Yeah. Like everybody was pissed about that, and everybody was, you know, everybody went with with Robert Downey. There was like a handful of, you know, white women that were upset with Robert Downey Jr. But for yeah. the most part, everybody was like, "Man, you you did a good job," you know. Yeah. Even Jamie Fox was like, "I wasn't, I was there, dude. You're you're amazing," you know. But right. But Simple Jack caught all the flack. That's it's amazing. That's yeah. that's it's selective outrage. Yeah. You know? It's am- it's amazing. I don't know. I was on this kick the other day where I was I was looking looking through older stuff and I was looking at some of these things and um that's actually how I came across to what what I was gonna bring up to you guys, see if you guys were familiar with the topic at all. Uh you guys ever heard of a man named Travis Walton? It's this guy. I don't recognize his no. face. Well, but, but- Travis I, I is heard a snippet of him. He is kind of a semi, I, I want to say semi famous guy. I mean, he's, uh, I think now after all these years later, now he's kind of back interested in the topic, but then not so much. And there, there was a reason for that. Uh, in 1975, uh, he was working in a national forest and Travis was abducted by uh, aliens. And there's, there's a couple different ways you can tell the story. There's, there's one where the, the, this is the biggest narrative that goes on for the last 30, 40 years now um, is that, they went up there, the ship zapped him and sucked him up and took off. His buddies freaked out and took off down the hill, whatever, and then, you know, whatever. But the story's actually pretty wild. Hearing it from him himself is, it, it changes everything. Right. And when you listen to his story, he says that they saw when they were, they were doing, uh, they were clearing brush. They were clear. Uh, they were up on this national forest. They were clearing brush. Uh, a forestry service was coming through to take trees. Their job was to clear the underbrush. So the machines could get right in there and zip the trees and go. 
They were raking the forest. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's common practice. It also helps prevent forest fires and stuff while they're in there working. Yeah. The, the scrub's gone. Exactly. So that was their job. In in the movie, there's there was a movie release called Fire in the Sky. In the movie, they were cutting trees down and all that. But in actuality, from his own mouth, they were they were clearing brush and, and shrubs and stuff. Um from from what they said was uh they were on this contract for a while and they were actually making decent money doing it. Uh one night when they were uh basically done for the night and they were leaving, they saw these weird lights up on this hill so they didn't know if somebody was up there or if something was going on they didn't know if they needed to go up there and you know somebody could be you know needed help or anything so they went up and when they got up there there was a ship a craft floating above the tree line and the lights were coming from it um what happened next is where I decided to go back and listen to all the different times he's told the story because something st stood out to me when they got out, they were sitting there. They were actually like, kind of like, this is freaking cool as shit. You know what I mean? They were all nervous, but they were, they were like, dude, look at this. You know, like I, I figured it'd be like how we would be if we saw it like, holy shit, dude, do you see that thing? Yeah, that's, that's fair. And then it started to, emit this low vibration they said that it was like a sound but they felt it they didn't like they didn't hear it audibly but they could feel it it was like it was like vibrating them so they started to back away from it travis didn't back away he kept looking all six of the other guys later on would testify different things that happened to travis but very similar one guy said light hit him it was like an explosion of light. He goes flying. Another guy said lightning struck him. Like everything that was described was close enough to the same for me where I was like, okay, I, I can't really dissect that one too much. Bright ass light. I, I've been close to lightning striking before. It's, it's, I mean, on a, on a bad day, dude, it would give you flash burn. It's that bright. You know, if you're lucky and you're not too close Hopefully you don't, you didn't see it long enough to burn your fucking, you know, eyes. But these guys said that the light was so bright. He goes flying. He hits the ground and crawls up to this, this little like log. And I guess he was like trying to take cover or something. The next thing they know, he's being zapped up to the ship. They freak the fuck out. They jump and pile into this truck, this pickup truck, and they haul ass down the hillside. They get, uh, I, I think they said that they, they, the guy uh, that was driving, uh, Mike, I can't remember Mike's last name, but when Mike got to a certain point, he said he kind of like got a hold of himself and basically said, we have to go back. And the other guys didn't want to go back. But he said, he's like, you can wait here if you want, but I got to go back. Nobody wanted to wait by themselves. So everybody just stayed in the truck. They went back up there. And when they got back up there, there was nothing. There was no trace. They were walking around in a group because they had one flashlight and everybody was like, not, they were too freaked out. They didn't want to separate. So they're That's walking fair. around with one flashlight and they're looking, they don't see anything. They stay up there for a while. So they went back. And they went straight to the authorities and they reported it. And when they told the authorities what had happened, the authorities thought that they were intoxicated. They thought that everybody was drunk off their mind. Well, Travis didn't show up. Travis didn't show up for a while. In fact, it took him so long to show up that the other guys were being basically being held and, and suspected of fucking murder at this point. And they kept telling the same story, same story. Here's what happened. This is what happened. You know, why aren't you up there looking? You know, why are you, why are we doing this? You should be there looking, you know, uh, Travis's brother was actually getting together large groups of people to go up there and, and search the forest. Because at that point they were like, whatever happened to him, if he was, if there was a body here, 
He could be eaten by something. He could be taken by something. We got to find him before or we're never going to get answers. So this became a, a big deal. Uh, other than Betty and Barney Hill, this was probably one of the biggest, most televised uh, abduction cases that's ever happened. And the, the crazy part about this to me is that Travis showed back up like, well, I, I want to say it was like uh, almost six days later or something like that, like six days, seven days. So I can't remember, but he shows back up and in the movie, it shows Travis just in a fucking phone booth. He's just in a phone booth and he's trying to call somebody. And I think he calls the, the main, the main guy, Mike, but in reality, he came, when he came to, he was back up on that Hill, almost exactly where he got taken from. And he started walking down the Hill and he didn't even remember why he started walking. He just did. It was like he was being driven and he saw the town's lights and he walked towards them. He didn't collapse until he got off the phone. The phone was still hanging there. So in his own words, he thinks that he passed out because he remember, he remembered calling his family and they didn't even believe it was really him. They thought it was a prank. So he calls his family and tells them like, I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm in town. I'm in a phone booth. And they're like, we'll be right there. So they start looking for him. They find him. He's passed out. They take him and they, they start to get the story out of him for the next like month or two. He's almost catatonic. Like he can't, he can't even formulate his sentences and little things were setting him off. And I don't mean like, you know, something spilling, he gets pissed. I mean, like he straight up thinks somebody's after him. And he's freaking out. He can't be in closed rooms. He can't be in total darkness. He can't, none of that. It's, you know, he even said to himself, he don't think he slept very much during that whole time that it took, it took months to get back to normal again. And that's when the, the hypnosis happened. That's when they, they hypnotized him to find out what happened. So to his memory, and again, this is where I pick up little details that I think are strange. Okay. In his memories, he came to on the ship. He just didn't know it was a ship. He comes to, and he's looking around and he cannot figure out where he is or why, but he knows his, his lungs and his back are burning. He can't hardly breathe. Like he's, he's literally struggling for air. He can't. Like he's, he's feels like he, he thought he was dying. He thought he was dead and he doesn't even remember exactly when the first of the beings came to him, but they slowly, but surely started to come to him. And these beings started to try to coax him, you know, with them, he freaked the fuck out, freaked the fuck out, had no idea what he was looking at. In his own words, he starts swinging. He basically was like Tyler in Total Darkness in that, that clip that we made. All right, so he started you, swinging. That's what it does. Yeah. Darkness does that to you. Okay, so that is point number one on my believability scale. He didn't say, I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't do anything. He said, I straight fucking started swinging. And I'm like, there you go. Finally, finally, someone's going to say it because, yeah, there's probably a, a good portion of us out there that would be too paralyzed to do anything. But I bet you there's just as many of us that would start fucking swinging. <laughs> right. You know? The interesting detail that I was going to say is that he started swinging at these things that were trying to do stuff to him. You know, he lost consciousness. He wakes back up. He's on a table. This time, there's a few of them. They're, they're holding him like this. They have these machines. They're doing stuff to him. Guess what? Old Travis goes for round two, starts fucking swinging again, breaks out of their restraint, shoves them off of him, 
easily, and that's one of my details there, easily shove, shoves them away, starts swinging. They back the fuck off of him. They don't like me. They don't do that shit and like shut him down. They literally back up like, oh, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? <laughs> how's, how's that fucking go again? <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, extra sensory uh, uh, telepathy. Yeah. Telepathy. So they didn't have like a laser gun where they were like, and just knocked him out. They straight up were like, okay, if he's freaking out, back up. He freaks out. They leave. They exit. And coincidentally, another human shows up. But the human doesn't talk. It just smiles. I'm At swinging. that point, I would have been like, can you just bring the fucking aliens back in? Just take your ass out of here. Cause <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's uh, That's some, like, they think that's what makes people like like each other and feel comfort type thing the uh the feeling he described was an overwhelming feeling of i'm on your team let's just come with me we're going to get out of here we're going to escape so the, the the guy come on grabs his arm and starts to pull him like come on come on he goes with him he's like he's like after seeing them this is human i'm going with this so he, at the time, he didn't question it. It wouldn't be till later that he started questioning this whole thing, all right? So he's following this, this guy all through this fucking ship to get out of this thing. And he said at one point, he looked up, and he's talking to this guy the whole time, like, where are we going? What are we doing? You know, how do we get out of it? And the guy's looking back at him like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and they, they keep going, right? He said at, at one point, the guy looks up, he looks up, sees a bright light, and he's standing in the fucking forest. Okay. Standing in the forest where he was taken. Or close to. Now, I know I've paraphrased this whole story. This story is everywhere. You can listen to it. You can listen to Travis Walton tell it in so many different ways. It's amazing. The details never change since 1975. They have never changed. The other guys that saw the initial thing. Uh, okay. What would be the biggest motivator out there to make up a huge abduction story and lie about it? Money. Publicity. Money. Book, book deals. Book deals. Money. Movie. Okay. He could have got a piece of like what the movie that you're talking about. Absolutely. Because they, uh, I had, I talked about this in season one about the Amityville horror because mm -hmm. that's what they said that they thought that the family was making it up because yep. they got a piece of all these book deals and movies and stuff because it was their story. So yeah, I, it's not far fetched to believe that. So yeah. Uh, the, the thing that, that was weird to me was that most of the guys, uh, I think at one point, um, I think they have, they did make some money off of the story. They made $5,000. They made $5,000. They, they submitted their story to uh, the national Enquirer, I think. And they were paid $5,000 to, to run the story. And that seems more like a, um, well, if we're going to be part of this, we might as well cash in. More yeah. so than let's do this to cash in. But there were some guys uh, in the group that never took a red cent. They didn't want any money. There's one guy that's actually changed his whole life around it because he believed it was a it was a very religious experience. And he goes to the site to this day. He goes up there and he and he sits there and he prays. I mean every year he goes to the same spot where Travis was taken and he, he sits and he prays and he will not take money and he will not do interviews about it. Uh, so, okay. You know. Well, I was just about to say, has he told the reason why does he believe that these beings is like, he believes extension? that they're divine. Oh, he they're divine. They're, they were divine. And I want to throw a theory of my own to you guys 
and see what you guys think. Okay. Because this is a- after devouring everything I could find about Travis. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's the notion that I got. All right. It goes back to the initial uh, sighting. Okay. They saw the ship, right? They, the ship didn't come down and follow them. It didn't show up where they were at, right? They drove to get to it. Okay. That that's, that's a detail right there. So the ship wasn't actively looking for someone to abduct. Okay. They showed up to it. They got out and were looking at it. Fuck. Yeah, I would. I'd want to see it. I know it's dumb, but I never claimed to not be. All right. So they get out and they look, they hear that noise. They all describe this noise. All right. Travis got caught by something because if they were trying to abduct him, that first blast would have not knocked him away. I believe that if they were trying to grab him, they could have grabbed him easily and taken him. I believe that whatever hit him the first time damaged his internal organs really fucking bad to the point where he was probably not going to make it. And what's the only time us wild, like our wildlife biologists ever interfere with the animal is when we do something to fuck that animal up. If we do something to fuck it up, then we'll intervene. Otherwise we'll let it get eaten by a lion. So if a lion would have came out and jumped on Travis right then, I think he'd be dead today. But he got too close. The ship did something to him. I don't think it was intended. I don't think they're infallible. So was there any other indications of like, okay, I remember in your in the story you were telling his lungs and his back was like killing him. Did he yeah. ever say any of that to when he was in the hospital? Yeah, like, see, did the they, lungs... Okay. Uh-huh. Imagine taking a blast of radiation to the lungs when Ooh. you're looking up at something. Oh. Okay. Imagine radiation burn. Right? So I was sitting there like, okay, he wakes up. They're not attacking him. They're not trying to like I mean, why fucking bring him back? Like, what would be the point? It's like, dude, you have a spaceship. Who cares if you bring him back? You could have chucked him out while you were up there. We would have just been like, that was probably a bird. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I think they <laughs> literally fucked him up on accident, and they were like, dude, let's fucking fix this guy and put him back. Oh, like, God. Oh, shit. Oh, the boss is going to be so mad. What time does the supervisor <laughs> get here? You know what I mean? How I'm so fired. So fired. Damn it, Philip. <laughs> right? You ever walked in on your employees, Josh, and they fucked something up and they're like mm-hmm. they like throw a blanket over it thinking that you won't see it. Like, why is there a blanket there? Here's a better question for you. <laughs> Do they ever try to fix it before you get there so you don't find out? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I really feel like we got motivations here. They accidentally fucked the guy up. They didn't mean to. I don't even think they were probably, they weren't intending to even, they were probably getting ready to blast off and get the fuck out of there so nobody would ever know the difference. But I think he literally just got caught in some thing and they were like, oh shit. Because all of the things that happened, like the trouble breathing, he said he, when he woke up, he couldn't breathe. His lungs burned, his, you know, everything was bad. He couldn't, he was struggling for breath. Even like the lack of oxygen will cause hallucination, right? So if you're in this state where you don't even know what you're looking at, you're, you might be hallucinating. You might not be. And these things are not very tough. He pushed them off of him pretty easily. They couldn't even restrain him. Even he said he was like, I'm, I was bigger than them. Like they're not, they're not big. They're not strong. Well, yeah. the, same, the same thing goes with, like, if just like how you were saying, like, if we accidentally intervene in, in like, wildlife and it was our fault and we try to help, we tend to back off no matter what 
kind of species it is because we don't want it to hurt itself again. That's why we don't That's like if you're point. working on it, uh, uh, working yeah. on uh, something, even like a wild animal, you tend to like if it starts to lash out, you let it do its thing until yeah. it calms back down. So I, I feel like that would be the case. Like, I'm just saying if they were this advanced, they would be able to have a way to keep you keep you down but they're not doing that because i like i like your theory i don't think they could afford to yeah i don't don't think they could afford to to restrain him i think he was in critical condition yeah because if they they fucking do it because i feel like if you let it play out and let them calm down themselves it's less risk of more injury yeah because if you're trying to restrain them you're causing them stress that's that will be the catalyst. Like you, you're causing them stress, so you would have to stop or leave. Yeah, try to figure out another way to keep them calm. And oh, well, I guess that would be the reason why they chose another human, uh, like a vision of a human, to help him. Yeah, leave and stuff. That that was it was. I thought that was weird. Was like they backed off and left. This human appears. You know, like hey, buddy, come with me, buddy. You know, like. <laughs> and it was like Josh said, it's like that was their idea of what he would need to, you know. I think at that point they probably were done, and they were like, okay, he's he's okay. Let's let's get him off the fucking ship before he starts shit. You know what I mean? I mean we do that. Like yeah. if you got like like think about in the zoo where they have like baby eagles that won't eat. They yeah. use a puppet. You know? Right? Yeah. They so have a, a people guilty. puppet. Yeah. They... <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I saw, you think there was like a, a alien down there? Like <laughs> they did the same thing with a. I saw a video of a. Uh, it was a baby a. seal. It was a baby seal that they found. <laughs> it's three aliens in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're on each other's shoulders. <laughs> but no, they uh, <laughs> they did the they did it with a baby seal. Like they made they took an old wetsuit and because it was looking for its mother they they would they had a hole where it, they put a bottle in so it yeah. would it would think that it's his mother so it would rest yeah. next to it so i i i kind of like i i feel like it's weird to like look at us as that primitive and yeah. it's a little terrifying that people like there's beings out there that could treat us like that I, right. I don't. I don't know. I don't think that. I don't think it's a primitive issue. I think it's more along the lines of, if you were in that situation. All right. Let's 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 play the devil's advocate here and say that everything Travis is saying is a hundred percent factual. Right. I'm not saying he is. I'm saying let's yeah. say he is. Because even he won't say that he is. Because right. Things <clears throat> are very hazy. Right. And then okay, let's put you in a place that you have no idea where you are, what it is you're in. You don't recognize anything. There's no comforting things around you. There's no language you recognize. There's no signage you recognize. There's no, you know, like we have certain things that we always have, you know, our doors are shaped a certain way. It makes sense. You know, you see a lever on a rectangle in a wall. That's a door, Yeah. you know, Square, (laughs) square toilet, square toilets definitely caught me off guard. (laughs) <laughs> that meme that was the worst part was the square toilet but <laughs> but okay so you're in this position right and you're looking around and there's a glimmer of hope a small bit of something you know that's familiar yeah. it doesn't have to be perfect it could probably fall very deep in the uncanny valley and still seem, yeah, you know, and still seem like it's just enough to be like, okay, that's familiar, you know, because in your mind, maybe the reason this person isn't responding is because, yeah, it may be human, but maybe it doesn't speak English, yeah, you know, maybe you're Who rationalizing knows where they took him from, yeah. How can you rationalize something in a completely irrational situation? That's exactly it. Yeah. I think you're just going to. I think that anything that's got the smallest glimmer of hope is going to seem like, you know, paramount yeah. compared to everything else. Um, Absolutely. I had a question. I, I, I didn't think you answered it, but did they find any 
thing wrong with him health wise at the hospital? Health wise, uh, I think there was a there was a something like they released about his health. He had okay. Now, okay, so here's where this is this is where things got a little controversial, right? Because you had two different you had two different parties reporting and disreporting it. There was a mysterious person that that came into the picture during the whole investigation and offered some reporter twenty five thousand dollars to go and basically spread misinformation about the whole thing. That guy was caught. All right. Guess what happened to that guy? Red rum. If this was the movies, you would be like, oh, they fucking killed his ass, right? No, no, no. CIA hired him. Dude. Oh, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Was, was fucking I need this weird. guy. The, the guy <laughs> literally went from, Hank, he was like, think, think, you, think of him like a moon. He was basically just a moon orbiting around the whole investigation during the whole time. And the whole time, he's spreading disinformation. Right. And he kept spreading all this stuff about uh, the Walton family, um, how they were covering up a big secret, uh, all this stuff. It was a plot to get rid of him because of a brother or whatever. And at the same time, even the guys that were with uh, Travis, all right, he didn't get along with half of them. The crew that worked together, they didn't fucking like each other. So that was the that was the detail that the the police got hung on. They were like, "Oh yeah, it's it's fucking known that they fucking hate each other." So they killed his ass. That and they got this other guy who's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I I heard that they were going to do it. You, you know what I mean? So you'd expect this dude to just disappear. No, he got hired by the CIA. I don't know if he still works for him, but oh. so not surprised yeah not surprised in the slightest i mean the cia is known for doing some really really shady shit but they're not supposed to work inside yeah that's uh that's all foreign the cia is supposed to be foreign like agency like it's supposed to work outside of the like the united states basically yeah, you know, really technically not allowed inside because that's FBI. Except for when they're paying prostitutes to pick up Johns and, and giving the Johns, you know, hallucinogenic drugs and, and, and doing experiments on them and then, then giving the black community syphilis. And then um, weren't they responsible for blowing up one of our own ships in the Bay of Pigs? You know? Like, yeah, they, they like to do shit to, to push their agendas, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, there was a question, another question. I, the only reason why I asked is that there was any radiation, yeah. like anything detected in his health was, I bring it up a lot because I feel like it's one of the other, only other like abduction yeah. style cases is the one that's local to us. It's uh, in Stanford, Kentucky. The three women that yeah. lost time and they literally tested them, and some of them had radiation burns on them. Right. And there's like no, like no real reason how they would have got that. So, with with Travis Walton's case, the reason why it it's it is similar, but the reason why it's it's also different is because for some reason, multiple third parties had all showed up and started screwing this case up. All right. So you, you go, you, it goes really quickly from could be a group of guys that just hoax something to multiple, uh, like government agencies involved all at once. Right. One of the things that was really interesting to me was that someone, a a government official had showed up to the, the police and told them, um, this is before he turned up by the way, When he returns, uh, we have a special group that'll be able to care for him. He's going to need certain medical treatments. And the police were literally like, "Uh, okay, like he's a missing person. Like we don't know if he's going to show up. 
And this person was like, he'll show up. But when he does, just here's, you know, and he like gave the, the, what do you call it? The boss. He gave him his card. Like, just call me and I'll send the team out. Was he black? Oh, like, was he in a, like, men in black, like, black suit? I don't know. But you got, like, you have FBI up there searching the mountain looking for him. You got, you know, like, these these weird, like, disinformation people that are out and about spreading all these different rumors to the point where it got back to the families where it was actually upsetting the families. Where they're, like, you know, the, the, I think at one point the brother was literally, like, I was up there every day looking for my brother like why would they just choose me to say that i wanted it wanted my brother dead like it didn't make any sense you know and how close travis was to his brother it was like no why you know but that i i'm not going to throw like sly against his brother but that's another thing too it's like a lot they always say the killer returns to the scene of the crime a lot and oh, yeah that's true I, I feel like that would be one thing that people start looking at, like somebody that even if you will watch any type of movie, the person that's always on your side is the one that's fucking you over. Yeah. But normally the one that hates you the most, hence his friends, the f- people that he was with are yeah. the ones that actually don't want harm to you. Right. Well, that's so, the thing. Uh, most of the guys in the work crew, the thing that they were most upset about, uh, when it was all said and done was that someone had told the press that when they showed up to the police, they were all crying and they didn't want people to know that they were crying. That was what they were upset about. They said that after the fact, they were angry that that, that couldn't have just been left out. They didn't want people knowing that they were crying, but at the time, they showed up, they saw something absolutely unbelievable. They saw their, their, you know, maybe not a friend, but their, their coworker literally just get sucked up into this weird thing. They have no idea what they're, what they're looking at or what happened. And they show back up, they go to the, the authorities and they're literally like bawling their eyes out because they're upset and they're trying to explain it. And it, even they knew how crazy it fucking sounded. But the one thing that later on, that happened to Travis Walton that I found very strange was that in an interview, he let slip uh, because someone had asked him, like, do you think they still check on you? And he's never been a person that's like, he's never like sat there and thrown out all these crazy theories. You know, if you, if you watch his like track record, there's a lot of guys out there that have capitalized off of this topic big time. But Travis Walton kind of, just does his own thing you know he kind of tells his story here's what happened to me i don't know if it's going to help but you know but he said that he don't know if they check on him but one weird thing did happen and he he said it he said it was the only time he ever suspected that they might check in on him every now and again he said it's when his little boy uh he was like a toddler i guess he was he was a little bitty fella They had one of those bed rails up on his bed or whatever. In the middle of the night, his little boy went to climb out of bed and slipped and slid down into it, catching himself in the neck. And he was hanging off the side of the bed, suspended by his neck in this bar. He basically was choking to death and couldn't even scream out. And Travis said that something woke him up from a dead sleep to the point where he was already standing up. And he went straight in that room and got his little boy and and saved his little boy's life. And he said, he just sat there and just like, even, even now when the man tells the story, he can't tell it without like literally getting physically shaken by it. Even though it's, it's all these years ago, he still can't let go of that, that moment when he almost lost his son, you know? And he said that as time went, you know, there's the shock of it. It just, he couldn't sleep very well. He was getting up and checking on his son all the time. And he was like, he could not get over it, you know? But as time went on, he was like, what, what woke, you know, what woke me up? Because even his, his best friend is a super big uh, skeptic. And he's like, you know, it's my best friend. You know what I mean? He's like, he's, it's just my best friend. It's, it's okay. You know? And his best friend said, he's like, 
Maybe you heard something. Maybe you just don't remember hearing it, but you heard something. And Travis's response was, yeah, maybe I did. I don't know. Maybe I did. But he said, it sure is weird that out of a dead sleep, he just wakes up standing up already and goes straight to his kid's room like he was on autopilot again, the same way he was when he was walking down that mountain that day. You know, I, I think the story is fascinating. I think it's it's absolutely fascinating. I do think it was a case of um, wrong place at the wrong time. You know, I think that if they were there and they were doing something, then I think he just got kind of caught in the wrong uh, wrong spot. You know, Googling his eyes up at a, this like crazy looking ship and then something happens. You know, I got some pictures to show you from it. Um, let me make sure I'm hitting the right. This is the movie's depiction of the aliens. If you guys have never seen it. Now here's another angle of it. Kind of, kind of weird. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. It's just kind of, kind of a weird simulator. That's probably a coincidence, but, uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> uh, to the left is Benny and, and Barney Hill, Betty and Barney Hill. Um, that's a, that's another story that happened. What? 10 years prior, I think very similar circumstances. And this is some of the guys on the right that, uh, uh, in that work crew. Uh, let's see here. What else do I got here? Yep. Here's one of the, uh, newspapers that was put out about the, about the story. Uh, and this is the phone booth where they found Travis. And I thought I had more. I think here's an artist depiction of the like the actual scene, what they saw. Wow. So that that would be absolutely terrifying. Yeah. So another uh another newspaper clipping here. You can you can kind of when you look through these these newspaper clippings, you kind of get the sense that everybody was kind of taking their shots at him. Like yeah. big time. You know, yeah. Except for the people that were there, the the people that were there, the the people that experienced it with them, the town. Um, not so much. They they didn't really they didn't really pick at him for it. They they kind of. I think the the thing was is that there was a big big detail that came out. Um that kind of put a, a little bit of a, a kink in the wheel, I guess, when it comes to uh, like the possibility that they hoaxed it was that multiple counties saw the craft. And lo there was, I think they said 14, I might be wrong on this number, but I thought it was 14 eyewitnesses from different places saw the craft. It wasn't just a work crew. And that was that was a big part of it. That was a big deal because, you know, you can go out in the middle of the woods and say you saw anything. You know, if nobody was with you, there's nobody to prove that you didn't. You know? The only thing that I like, there's questions that are inside the story that I really want to know. Yeah. It's like, okay, what were they? What were they doing? What was this accident that happened? What was this bright light? What were they? What was this? spacecraft doing that could have caused him like that caused him harm yeah so like what was the big bright light that they shot down like if they wasn't intentionally trying to get him like pull him up in the beginning what were they doing what was down like like maybe it was them trying to take off when they saw the truck come but why wouldn't they have <laughs> lifted off like the the craft stayed where it was and never moved an inch after it shot that shot that beam like yeah, the way they mean, made it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a fighter jet blows a flame long before it takes off. So does right. a space shuttle. I mean but the I'm only not thing is is like right. how would they have noticed that uh, like that quick that they hit something. Uh, that that Especially, I don't know. Like yeah that, I like that, I know that, I'm, that, I'm 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 grasping at straws here. I wouldn't say that. I, that's an excellent question. 
Oh. I because I'm just like wondering because this is the only one that I I'm not entirely sure if there's other incidents where beams of light. The only time I've heard of a beam of light coming out of a spacecraft is that somebody's like the beings are trying to pick something up. Yeah, yeah like a tractor. I'm, beam. Yeah, tractor beam. Like that's the only thing. But a bright light shooting down, like lightning or just yeah. just light itself, that actually caused damage to something, like knocked him back. Yeah. So you that was for a second. I, I played with the idea of, I mean, you got a bunch of young guys and they're looking up at this thing. It's not that mm -hmm. far away. What if he picked up a rock and these are forestry guys, bub. They might've been armed. What if they fucking it's... pulled a pistol and shot it? <clears throat> you know, you're talking guys that are in the woods for days. They don't just, a lot of times the, the forestry guys, don't just go up and come home every night. You know, they go up and they're there at yeah. camp working for days on end. Right. There's some dangers out there. I mean, know? this would be a detail that you'd probably leave out of the story. Yeah, you know, firing popping rounds off at flying things in the skies. I mean, there's there not, is the possibility. Not, that looked highly upon, that's for sure. Yeah. The only other thing I was thinking that they were they could have been drilling in a way using who, the the ships the, the ship maybe i don't i mean who knows remember you know? like cuz okay well that's another thing remember the one in michigan the couple that saw the one sucking water up into its yeah. craft right uh maybe this is a different like different at, like idea of it but maybe they were there was something under the ground that they wanted and yeah. or I, I don't know. I like I said, I feel like I am grasping at straws, but I'm just wondering what was like what was it an accident? Yeah, was yeah. it intentional? I don't think uh, that you said where all this took place. It was just oh. the national forest. Uh hang on, I get you that. Yeah, I'm kinda curious uh, about that now. Apache Sit Greaves National Forest. Where's that located? Uh it says here it's east central Arizona. Uh, into the U.S. state of New Mexico. Okay. Uh, so he was near Snowflake, Arizona, when this happened. So. And another thing too is like if we were talking, like that. Uh, that's why I was wondering if he had any pro like that was. Uh, sorry, I'm scattered brain here. Um, if he had any medical problems prior right. to this. Because remember, we talked about missing 411, the UFO yeah. connection. Right. Remember the one guy that he had uh, scars all up and down of uh, his uh, his lungs. Right. And these were scar tissue. Like, this will never go away. I, like, I can't remember what was scar the Scar tissue from uh, radiation burn is, like, once it happens, it's that's there. And they were gone the next time they, they did that. Uh, yeah. Like they did x-rays and they saw that there was no scar tissue on that this guy's lungs. Wild. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's wild. Like how, how could that have happened? Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. And it's just like the, like the ladies, like how did they get radiation burn in the middle of like a middle of nowhere? Right. Like there's like, I, I I'm not really familiar with it. Like, could there be random pockets of radiation just happening out of nowhere? It'd be worth looking into. I mean, you would think, though, if that was a thing that was happening out there, that, that random be radiation pockets yeah. might happen, people would say something, you know? Yeah. And then, like that, it would keep happening probably wherever the source is the first time. Yeah. Yeah. There would be multiple, yeah, multiple yeah. people. I mean, when, uh, when they, you know, for sometimes when people have, uh, like tumors in their lungs and stuff, uh, sometimes they'll use radiation to shrink the tumor. So that they can use chemotherapy to kill it easier. I, I know I'm, this is I'm dumbing this down big time. I know this is way more complex than that, but one of the major side effects of radiation treatment is the burning sensation in the lungs and the shortness of breath. Yeah, you know, and it's they have to use steroids to get rid of the inflammation of the lungs, and it's it. What is it? A corticosteroid like? You know what I mean? Like a super cortisone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I thought when I, when I, 
you know, when I was listening to the, to his story and I, and he said that when he couldn't breathe, when he woke up in the ship, I was like, damn dude. So they, they straight up zapped his ass with some kind of like focused radiation. Cause you got to think that some of these people that they get radiation burn on their lungs, I mean, they're doing multiple treatments and it, it builds up over time. And this dude got that all at once. So, I mean, regardless of if it was aliens or something else, he definitely went through some crazy shit and other people saw it. So it was like, that to me was like, I, I mean, take aliens completely out of this. You know what I mean? Like remove aliens as a possibility and you've got something majorly fucked up that happened to this man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. One other thing that keeps baffling me, okay, these are supposed to be superior beings. They've traveled light years oh, uh, like from where they came from to here to do whatever they want to. Yeah. But there's always some type of case of radiation. Why, like, did they become more, like, they were so advanced, but they still use some type of nuclear-style energy and there are crafts well, and like would, is is uh, okay wh what's the only thing like it, is uranium the only thing that really produces radiation the biggest factory like nuclear radiation factory ever is like all during the day it's just floating there in the sky like we get bombed by radiation like like endlessly but going back to your question I'd actually have to ask you like a question in return. You said they say these these are advanced beings. Okay, who? Who said that? I, I'm people not assume saying that. You know what I mean? I'm just, yeah, I'm assuming like yeah, I'm assuming that and other people are assuming that. But yeah. wouldn't you that's actually a good basis to go off of because we haven't done this type of travel. Right. Like there is no way we are far from even being able to make it to Mars, do you know uh, what the uh, and live like like to be having a man-made or yeah man-made uh, spacecraft that can travel light years away or even like just so far and be able to survive the trip? Yeah, that like we are not even close to it. So I'm that's why I'm using my bases off of. Do you know that they're how advanced. much more advanced they could possibly be? About a hundred years. By our scale, a hundred years. So we went from walking and riding carriages and shit to fucking space shuttles. You know what I mean? Now take that same scalability. All right, let's just measure it in horsepower. Measure it in horsepower right <clears throat> there. Dude, we can do all the math with horsepower at this point. You could say that walking. You're like, what? A tenth of a horsepower? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. you're a, you're like a tenth. And that's where we started. We fucking walked everywhere. You know, we had sticks, and we walked. It's like all the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> you just walked the whole way. All right? We got horses, and we went up to one horsepower. So if, you, if you're using my shit math here as a basis, we went... 10 times the travel ability just by learning how to ride a horse. That's fair. All right. So you take the horse and you say like, man, I wonder how long it would take me to ride a horse all the way to like, you know, for I'm in, I'm in Russia. How, how long would it take me to ride all the way to Africa? If your horse lived probably a long goddamn time or we hop on a boat, we catch some wind and we sail. I don't know. Let's just use some shit math here. Let's just say 25 horses there. I'm probably off here, but whatever. You know, we're scaling. All right, so this sail on a good windy day is giving us 25 horses of power. It's probably not right, but for the sake I'm, of argument. I'm, I'm looking it up. Correctly. All right, awesome. <laughs> All right, so then we get to the point where we're, hey, let's, we're making steam engines. 
we don't even need the fucking wind. So when the wind dies and this guy over here is just sitting out in the middle of the fucking ocean, we're just put, 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 put right past him. We might not be as fast, but we're steady on. And we go to trains and from trains came a whole new industry. Then we go to automobiles and then we go to fucking Tesla's. Then we go to fucking spaceships and airplanes and jets. Boy, I've got some, I've got some really interesting stuff here. What do you got? All right. So I have a mathematical way to figure this out now. All sales produce 0.2 horsepower per square foot. Holy shit. Right? Okay. So, right. So if you're 0.2 per square, right? If you had a 10 foot sail, you'd have 20 horsepower. So your math is not far off. Not far off. Okay. That's, that's pretty good math. He knew that the whole time. He just wanted to make us actually feel that was he was fucking guessing. Yeah, no, right. he wasn't. So he the, the math here is going to be a little, little bit harder for me. Like I'm, I'm not even going to try. But your space shuttle horsepower, thirty-seven million horsepower. And we could probably figure out, like, uh, I, want, I don't know if this is this is a doable thing, but. Let's see. How long did it take us to go from walking? To the space shuttle. Well, I don't think I don't think anybody's asked this before. <laughs> I thought maybe it would pop up. You know what I mean? Like when when did humans first start riding horses? And then when was the first man-made rocket? That's, I feel like that would probably be your first. We, dest we do, uh, duck or domesticated horses 6,000 years ago. All right, 6,000 years. 6,000 years, and we rode those all the way up to the industrial age. All right, so if we can figure out, because you got to think, once we hit industri the industrial age, everything sped up. Yeah. We, we weren't just, you know, hand making everything anymore. Now we've got machines to make machines to make machines to make machines. And now, I mean, look at this, man. 3D printers have become a thing. You know what I mean? It is a matter of time. And I, even as of right now, I'm probably reporting this late. It's a matter of time before people are able to 3D print more 3D printers. If you can 3D print a 3D printer, you've almost solved space travel because you no longer have to send a crew out. You send an AI or a program with 3D printers so it can harvest its own shit and make the things it needs to explore and send shit back to us. You know? The first man, a human, uh, first human to enter space was 1961. First human in inner space, 1961. And we were still riding horses all the way up to when? The 1900s. 1900s. I mean, if you don't, if you're discounting locomotives, you know, but if you're Was looking it? at just like the automobile. You and know. then, and then the first, uh, like, first uh, lunar landing was uh, 1969. So, Eight years later. Yeah. Uh, I, thought I, that I thought I had something here, but I mean, that was all... just look at the hundred year past where it's set right now. It's 2023. Go to 1923 and look at the difference in our technology yeah. in just a hundred years and something that's we're only talking two generations. Yeah. We're about to, and back then they were about to have an economic crisis. In the next five years. Yeah. I'm mean, all I'm yeah. saying is with my example, yeah. when I said that they, they might be as early as a hundred years ahead of us. We had model yeah. T, we had Model T Fords in 1923. Yeah. We, we have, have no idea. Like if we, they we have red eye Hellcats right now. Yeah. We went from 15, 15 horsepower to eight hundred horsepower on tap. Right. Reliable. That's not even like the highest horsepower vehicles out there. Yeah. That's just a readily available one. Right, your pockets keep enough. 
And we have recreational vehicles that people build themselves with twice that in horsepower. Oh, way more. You yeah. know what I mean? 2,000 yeah. horsepower is not uncalled for. Yeah, that's what look I'm your, saying. Like, look at your top fuel dragsters. But, but yeah, what's the, exactly. But when we get above, was it like 200 miles an hour? That's like when we – steering is out the fucking question. Yeah. It's like going that fast will just to a degree. I, to a yeah. degree, you're you're maintaining. I mean, you're not going to yeah. make a sharp right. You know? Yeah, yeah. But like my, my um, there's a he's the vice president of our company, and his motorcycle goes well over 200 miles per hour, like 223. He's a record holder. You know, he races every weekend and wins a lot. You but know, they say after 200 miles, especially on a bike, they said that's when you start to you create like weightlessness in your bike. Like you actually only oh, yeah. have to be strapped to that thing. I mean, you so think you don't about it. fly off. It's if you're, if you're doing 223 miles an hour on a motorcycle and you're in that like yeah. lean forward position yeah, and you had the unfortunate event of the front of your shield on your helmet opening up and you open your mouth, your asshole would look like a parachute. <laughs> Just <laughs> right behind you. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, all I was getting at with all this was just that yeah, we, sorry. we have no idea when they entered their industrial age because you could we could say like, oh, God, this species has been out there for tens of millions of years. That's that's fine. How long have they been making good shit, though? Right. Have, you know, were they making computers that whole time or were they kind of doing it like us? Were they kind of just walking around well, and even then, stuff with sticks, smelling even, their finger? And even yeah. then, let's let's back up on this one. I hear this happened in 1975. How much has changed since 1975 for us? Yeah. The 1975 Corvette put out 123 horsepower. <laughs> you know? Right. We have no idea if, if they're a work in progress the same as us. Mm -hmm. people, I, I've heard the argument where people say, do you remember when it used to be flying saucers? Yeah. Now it's... I think, now I it's think I've made that I mean, okay. a lot on the show. Yeah. Is that There they, you go. The the what we see in the sky changes over time. It's like Bigfoot got bigger. Bigfoot got bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Bigfoot in, got in, bigger. The ships change shape. In, in one case, you could say like Bigfoot getting bigger. I feel like embellishments. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. If it's somebody saw thing. something, it might have freaked him out, and it might have looked like the fucker was nine feet tall. But in this, we're dealing with possibly a technological race, right? And if it's a techno technologically inclined race that's actively exploring, their technology is going to get better and better, just like ours. They're not and, just going to be like, "Hey, we got to this, man. Let's just fly you know, monsters." Done. But yeah. I feel like another thing too is like we we use a lot of our technology for entertainment too, and I feel like it like it it's almost sometimes it will start out as entertainment and then it will sleep uh, it will seep into like like military style sh stuff too and but i will uh, but that does depend because like tablets were like probably in the like 90s in the two uh like the early 2000s before we even saw them yeah i mean and like, we can we can thank nasa for battery technology you know yeah. the, the entire reason cordless drills exist is because of nasa yeah, they yeah. had the, the first ones. I believe they're Panasonic too, but battery technology is what limits a lot of what we do, and I mean, it's what, grown in the last ten years. But what I was like trying to say there was, uh, we use a lot of ours for technology, and that that uh, like well, entertainment. What doesn't say that these actually they strive for? That's all their money goes to. It's not goes to anything really else. Other than leaving their planet, studying the universe. What if? What if we're looking at this all wrong? Of hundred percent, we probably are. What if it's what I know I am. <laughs> what if it is entertainment? What if this, you know, this uh, this thing that happened to, to Travis wasn't a research vessel? What if it was like, you know, a cruise ship? Yeah, we have no idea. 
I mean, you know? yeah. Or two teenagers stole dad's car. <laughs> or two teenagers stole dad's car. If and if that's the case, then it does explain why the ships have changed. Yeah. Because not all ships would be the same. It's why the like a police car doesn't look like my car sitting outside. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I I don't walk outside and, and hop in my you know my Maserati. Yeah, we're not I basically mo- just drive my Chevy Cruze. For the most part, we're not <laughs> driving Deuce and a Halfs and Humvees to work either. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So there's that, and then there's the other possibility that this isn't alien to the planet at all there's the possibility that this is an in-house thing and maybe that's why there was such a smear campaign against it that i thought of that i actually thought of something similar to that well maybe they were testing something you know Mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't maybe it wasn't a spaceship maybe it was some of the very first silent helicopters yeah i did uh you know a while back a buddy of mine had he actually had a really insightful thing uh Cause I was saying like, yeah, we never know. It could be the government. It could be the government testing fucking top secret advanced stuff. And he goes, he said, you know, I'm on board with that idea because it's reasonable, but I can't help but wonder where they fucking got the idea. I mean, he's like, if they were like, if they found something and they're like, Hey, you know, let's just kind of, let's just nix that, but let's figure that out so we can use it. I mean, that seems a little alien ex machina, you know? Yeah. Because we invent stuff all the time without having it be inspired by some outer worldly thing, you know? I mean, we do it. The three of us do it. You know, we invent sounds that go together. You know, we may be, you know, we may have originally been inspired by other, other bands and other musicians, but... There's stuff that we make that sounds like nobody else. Right. You know, so. Do you think it's far-fetched to think that if they found a ship that they wouldn't try to backwards engineer it? No, I, I absolutely believe they would in a heartbeat and yeah. an absolute heartbeat. But I also believe that Henry Ford didn't find a Model T in the woods. <laughs> yeah, you know? no shit. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's that. So, like, you know, well, I mean, he wasn't the first automaker, but, you know, still, like, yeah. whoever, whoever, what was it? Was it? Mercedes, right? Daimler Benz, wasn't that the very first automobile? I can't remember. Or one of the first. Somebody yeah. thought of this shit. Somebody thought of it. Yeah. Somebody decided horses aren't the way to go. We got to go somewhere else with this. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. It comes from something, but it doesn't necessarily come from. It's kind of like when they. It, it's like my old problem when they when they were talking about Roswell. They were like, "Oh, we recovered a spacecraft," you know, and I'm like. They were like, oh, it's a crash landed spacecraft. And I'm like, kind of seems like kind of a shitty ship if it crash landed here. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell were, what was going on on that thing? You know? But I've always wondered my myself, like, okay, the advancement in technology and stuff, like, okay, think of like the person that invented the the internal combustion engine. Like, just thinking about that, like, telling that to somebody, like, pitching the idea, okay, I think that we could take the same premise of our steam-powered engines. Yeah. But we have many explosions in different compartments that pushes this rod that goes up and down, like, pushes a cylinder, like, this thing goes down, and it pushes it and puts, like, it, like it spins this shaft that goes out to here. It's like, how do you get to that that I know that there's a lot of R and D that goes into something and the things of it, but like yeah. how fast it came out of the, like it had, like it wasn't like special. Like it had its own problems, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, how could you, what person just sat there and it's like this, Holy crap. I, yes, this is what I need to make. And how do you even like, where do you go? Where do you start? Right. It's, it's crazy. It's like, but that's why I feel like a lot of these technologies today, there's not that really creative like vision anymore. It seems like it's kind of rehashed. Like, okay, what is something that is like everywhere now? Security cameras, like uh, like doorbell, like the ring. Yeah, that's yeah. He took two technologies, 
a wireless camera and a, a doorbell and put them together. Like, that's cool. It's innovative, but he's rehashing old technology. And well, I feel like that's, we have I feel to. like, but I feel like that's the same thing. Like we haven't really, I don't feel like we have thought yeah. of anything new. Like that engine that you were talking about last episode. That's yeah. new. That's something a, fucking new. I actually had a follow up about that for you guys. Uh, turns out that NASA and DARPA are going to be testing a nuclear engine. That's specifically for travel to Mars. Ooh. Yeah. It's like, I think I, I want to say this is the first nuclear engine that they're going to actually build for space travel. It's pretty wild. It is wild. I can't, I can't imagine what the horsepower on that thing is going to be. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> space horses. And wait until like, that's a song. Uh, yeah. Like a hundred, a hundred years later. <laughs> Freaking rat riders are going to start putting those nuclear engines in their fucking car somehow. They, <laughs> I want to say, like the automotive industry, those fuckers are very innovative. They, they're like, dude, I want. Okay, I need. I don't need this. I don't need this. Yeah. Too much weight. I need to go fast. Yeah, it says <laughs> like, here that uh, DARPA is going to be building this as a thermal nuclear rocket. And it's going to allow for uh, faster transit times between Earth and Mars and the moon and Mars. Isn't it like six months right now? Like that was the but we actually have to like it's a six, a six months interval yeah. to, from Earth to Mars because it's the alignment. Wait till they slap this bad boy on there. They'd be like, you want to go to Mars? Get you here in 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I don't know. Slow <laughs> down. You're like your tuna fish sandwich is flying behind you. Just wait till like their CDL courses and stuff for like you know truck driving back and forth to Mars, and you're like, hey, I can't check my mirrors, man. Why? This is a fucking G force. Like, <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> Be a swift super. Uh... Spaceship upside down on the moon. <laughs> that was swift. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it's a we got an hour and twenty something into this one. I feel like I feel like we went the mother of all tangents. And I had another we, part of this. Sorry. That's whatever. But I just it, wanted, I, I, I just wanted I to let, get your guys' reactions. Yeah. I love like love these actual ones that it, it creates like thought process like you yeah like the reason behind the whole whole thing so you know what i'm just gonna shut up because if i start talking i'm just gonna keep going we're gonna get into a whole thing about space yeah. horses it's, it's kind of like when i i started about the whole fucking, space horse uh the time thing last episode <laughs> gibbs called me out on it yeah yeah he's like don't do that <laughs> <laughs> 57 right. minutes into an episode. No, we don't do that. No. <laughs> I do have to give myself a redaction. Though. I think I did the math wrong on your sale. I think what? it's actually two horsepower, not 20. For Is it two? Yeah. This, uh, this like post COVID muddy brain shit. Yeah. I'm not used to this. Like, I'm usually really good at math and I've been making <laughs> a lot of mathematical errors recently. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what's going on with that, but yeah, I believe it. I believe I did the math wrong on that. Cause how in the hell, if it's 0.2 horse per square, yeah. how could the number be bigger so than the square foot? Every, every 10 feet would be a, yeah. a horse. Yeah. I'm redacting myself. Yeah. It's still, I mean, it still it works with the scaling anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can live with it. Every 10 foot of sales, two horsepower. There you go. So, but if you have some big ass ship with tons of sales, I mean, yeah, you, know, you could yeah. get twenty. You could get twenty horse. Yep, there you go. All right, well, you guys out there, take care of him. each other. Hmm. You know, don't. Uh... Oh, he's got a question. No, no, oh, no, no, no. I no, no. I'm, sorry. I'm well, just wanting to kill this. It was just something about the sales, but just go ahead. What's is your question it... about the sales? I mean, well, yeah, I just wanted it? to know: is it like if you have multiple sales, does that up it? Yes, it's the yeah. square, oh, okay. footage, the square footage. Yeah, of each so, sale. Yes. So if you had a hundred square foot of sale, which is not hard to do, a four yeah. by 12 sheet is 48 square foot, you know? So if you have a hundred square foot of sale, you have 20 horsepower. That's okay. That's yeah. nice. 
Okay, there you go. end it. There you go. Because <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I just keep talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I shut All up. right. I'm going to tell you guys bye before Tyler thinks it's anything else. Take care of each other. We'll see you in the next one. Mwah. Sail, you guys. That was <laughs> such a dad that joke. So dad. Yeah. Such a dad <laughs> joke. I had to, you know, redeem myself for that horrible math. <laughs>